Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. So in my last episode, I talked about the new tech horror movie on Netflix, Choose or Die. And if you saw that episode, then you'll know that I was actually quite disappointed with the film. I was excited about the concept of the film, a killer video game, but in my opinion, the movie just failed to meet its own potential. So I wanted to do an episode where we talk about some films that do the tech horror subgenre well. Tech horror is where the movie uses technology to help create the horror or help develop the horror situation. So for example, VHS tapes, computers, video games, phones, and in some movies they actually use futuristic technology such as AI. I think generally we've always been afraid of technology. That fear has inspired films such as Terminator, Ex Machina and Blade Runner. The idea that these technological creations that we make evolve past us and then become a danger to us. It's also popped up in films like Frankenstein and Jurassic Park, where we've played around with technology and machinery to play with and manipulate life and death and nature. It's funny that I didn't realise until researching this episode that I am actually a really big fan of the tech horror subgenre. I absolutely love some of the movies on this list. Some of them have been some of my favourite viewing experiences, some of them the best horror that I've seen in recent years, and one of them is one of my absolute favourite horror movies of all time, and still to this day, the movie that has scared me the most. So let's go through what I consider to be the top 10 tech horror movies out there. But bear in mind, there may be some missing from this list, including your own favourites, because disclaimer, I haven't seen every tech horror movie out there yet. Host is a British supernatural horror movie that was released exclusively on Shudder in July 2020. Set during a pandemic lockdown, it follows six friends who decide to do a seance during a Zoom call, but they accidentally invite the attention of a demonic presence and begin noticing strange occurrences in their homes. Host was directed and co-written by Rob Savage. Filming actually took place during the lockdown, so Savage had to direct the actors remotely, and the actors had to set up their own cameras, lighting, and stunts. The movie was filmed through the Zoom application with the actors all in different locations. Host only has a runtime of 56 minutes, but in that time, they've managed to create a very effective supernatural story with good jump scares, but it also manages to capture the social isolation and anxieties of that period of time. Host also has a fresh rating of 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Ring You is a Japanese horror movie that was released in 1998. It's based off of the book by the same name written by Koji Suzuki. After her niece and three friends are each found dead after watching a supposedly cursed videotape, reporter Raiko Asakawa sets out to investigate. Along with her ex-husband, Ryuji, Raiko finds and watches the tape herself and receives a phone call informing her she will die in seven days. Can the two break the curse in time? Ring You is one of my absolute favourite horror movies of all time, and still to this day the scariest movie that I have ever seen. This supernatural ghost story was the film that began the real boon of J-horror in the 90s and early 2000s, and it had a very successful American remake in 2002. And I have to say, if you're not personally a fan of movies with subtitles or foreign movies, then the American remake is well worth checking out. In my opinion, the Ring remake is the best American remake of Asian horror that is out there. Ring You, like a lot of J-horror of the time, plays on the contemporary anxieties of the country as it began to blend its old traditions with more modern technology. Unfriended was released in 2015 and follows six friends who join an online group chat session. The friends become scared after they're joined by a user known only as Billy227. When one of them receives a message from a classmate who killed herself one year previously, they become determined to prove the identity of Billy227, but the friends are forced to confront their darkest secrets and lies. So Unfriended doesn't always have a very positive review. In fact, from what I can see online, it has a very mixed opinion about it and only has an audience rating of 37%. However, I personally really do like this movie. I thought that the way it was filmed was really creative. It's in the style of found footage, but it's done through the desktop of one of the characters' laptops. 
I found myself constantly engaged and checking the screen for all the little pop-up boxes and little um, chat boxes and emails popping up and I think that the film builds a really good level of tension throughout. I think Unfriended also has some really good death scenes that are both a good scare but also really tragic at the same time and I think that it's a really good blend of a teen slasher movie with um, the found footage but it's also got a commentary on online and cyberbullying and the consequences that can come from this. One Miss Call is another Japanese horror released in 2003. People begin receiving voicemail messages from their future selves in the form of the sound of them reacting to their own violent deaths, along with the exact date and time of their death. After her friend's death, Yumi receives a message herself and tries to find answers to the mystery. While One Miss Call may not be the most original J-horror movie as it tried to follow the success of its predecessors, I do think that this is a really good and a really fun movie. It follows a lot of the J-horror staples, so you have a supernatural killer manipulating technology to kill people, and then of course you have the leads who set out to investigate and get to the bottom of the curse. If you are a fan of films like Ring You, then I would say you will definitely find something to enjoy in this film. And as with a lot of horror movies there is of course an American remake that was released in 2008. I do not however recommend that one. I mean of course you are free to go and check it out yourself but personally I did not think it was a good film and it just completely failed to capture what the original one did. Cam is a Netflix original that was released in 2018. It follows Alice, a cam girl who is determined to become the number one cam girl on the website she works through. But then one day her account is stolen by a look-alike. Determined to get her account back, Alice sets out to unmask the mysterious woman and regain her identity. What I love about Cam is that the screenplay was actually written by Isa Massey, a former Cam girl herself, and a lot of the story is apparently based on Isa's experiences as a Cam girl. And I think that because of this, it really helps give the movie a very natural and organic feel. Cam really reminded me of films like Black Swan, where you have a female lead who is very determined and becomes obsessive over becoming the best at what they do. Um, I also think that Cam did a really good job of taking the tech horror to another level, as it now introduces um, doing it through social media and the idea of identity theft, but in Cam, this is in a literal form. The Call is a South Korean movie that was released in 2020. It follows Soo Yun and Oh Young Suk, two women connected by phone and who live in the same house but 20 years apart. As the two women strike up a friendship, things begin to turn sour and Soo Yun's past and life is put on the line. So the themes in The Call are that of our fate and our past traumas and like many sci-fi movies before it, it also explores the dangers of trying to fight your own fate and change your past. The Call was initially supposed to be released theatrically but because of world events it was delayed and then released on Netflix. I would highly, highly recommend this one. I absolutely adored The Call and I had so much fun watching it. The Call does have both some thriller elements to it and some horror elements to it and some of the scenes in it are genuinely creepy and I also think that the two main leads in it do an incredible job. So while some of the other Asian horror movies on this list have had ghostly killers manipulating technology to kill their victims, The Call uses technology as a way to um, breach the two different time periods while maintaining in a very human killer. They Live was written and directed by John Carpenter and released in 1988. It follows Nada, a wanderer with no meaning or direction in his life, who discovers a pair of sunglasses capable of showing the world the way it truly is. Nada notices that advertising, media and the government are full of subliminal messages meant to keep the population subdued. Like a lot of John Carpenter's movies, on its initial release, it received quite negative reviews. However, They Live has gone on to develop a bit of a cult following and does receive more favourable reviews now. They Live is full of social commentary and exposing the um, control and manipulation of us through the use of media. It also has the famous line, it's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum and I'm all out of gum. And it has one of the longest and daft fight scenes in a movie. Pulse is a Japanese horror movie that was released in 2001. After college student Toguchi takes his own life, a number of young adults living in Tokyo witness terrifying visions transferred across the internet. As more people disappear throughout the city, the internet becomes a breeding ground for malevolent spirits. 
Two stories following different people run side by side as they try to solve the mystery behind the ghosts. Pulse is an exploration of technophobia, social isolation and mental health and as with a lot of J-horror movies of the time, the horror comes not only from the ghosts haunting the character but also from the contemporary fear of modern technology. It really capitalises on the fear of unknown technologies and the internet which was becoming more prevalent in their day-to-day -day lives. But what makes Pulse so effective is how even though we are familiar with and adjusted to modern technologies in our lives, the idea of the internet being used to invade our personal lives is just as relevant today. While I didn't love Pulse as much as Ring You, it definitely stayed with me and I found it oddly heartbreaking in a way as it really looks at the idea of eternal loneliness in both life and death. Upgrade is a blend of different genres ranging from thriller, horror to sci-fi action. It follows Grey, a technophobe who suffers paralysis and loses his wife during an attack. But when billionaire Aaron Keane offers him a chip in his body that can restore his mobility, he sets out to get revenge. Upgrade was written and directed by Lee Winnell. This was in fact Winnell's second outing as director and his love of sci-fi and horror movies is evident in the near future world that he creates within the story. And there's this lovely blend of aesthetics with the technology and vehicles of our time with the futuristic technology of this created world. For fans of another of Winnell's creations, Saw, Upgrade has you covered on the gore front. Perhaps it's not to the same level as some of the other Saw movies, but it's definitely substantial. I'm thinking of one scene in particular that involves a jaw. Upgrade's use of the tech horror is to tap into humans' fear of the development and evolution of technology and AI and of us losing control of it. It also looks into the idea of the creator being destroyed by its own creation, a story which has been explored before in things like Frankenstein. And the last one on this list is a little bit more out there but considering this list was inspired by Choose or Die about a killer 80s video game, I thought that this next entry was quite fitting. Bandersnatch is a standalone episode of the Black Mirror series created by Charlie Brooker. It stars Fionn Whitehead and Will Poulter and was released on Netflix in 2018. It's set in 1984 and follows Stefan, a young programmer who is creating a video game based on a choose-your-own-adventure book called Bandersnatch. Bandersnatch acts as a choose-your-own-adventure interactive experience for the audience, allowing you, the audience, to navigate Stefan through numerous choices ranging from what cereal to eat, what music to listen to, whether or not you should accept an offer from a company CEO, or even commit a crime. So when I first set out on my very own Bandersnatch adventure, I thought that it would have a linear storyline and that there would be some kind of satisfying conclusion. But... If you haven't seen it yet, I have to forewarn you that the reality is much more like falling down a rabbit hole. There are numerous paths that you can take depending on what choice you make and there are a lot of dark elements in Bandersnatch as well from trauma, grief, drug use, mental health and even murder. I also just want to give a shout out to Stay Alive. It's not on this list because it's not a good film, technically. But it is still a fun watch and it also involves a killer video game like Choose or Die but in my opinion it's a much more enjoyable watch. So there you have it guys, my top 10 tech horror movies. Hopefully some of these struck your guys' interest. Let me know down below which of these you guys have already seen, which ones you think you might check out. Also, let me know some of your recommendations. Like I said earlier, I am a big fan of this subgenre. In the meantime though, thank you as always for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye guys. The internet becomes a breeding ground for mon- <laughs> The internet becomes a breeding ground for mon- <laughs> Like Nemo trying to say see an enemy. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs>